how to live until you're 125 minimum. My exact game plan, but not just lifespan, right? How long you live, health span is even more important because I don't wanna live a long time unless I'm healthy and have all the freedoms I have today. So my exact game plan, I'm getting ready to write it out. Starting with number one, data. Data must drive your decision making. We're not gonna guess, we're gonna test. We're not gonna follow blindly what some influencer or health guru is, says is right for you. We're not gonna follow what your aunt or uncle follows or your brother or your cousin or your dad just because it worked for them. We are gonna let data drive the decision making. So the foundation must be data and testing. Let's get started. So number one, data, extensive testing. We're gonna run mold and toxicity test. Here's an interesting stat for you. Our leading practitioner over 30 years of experience has worked with 52 cancer patients during that time. In all 52 cases, you know what was found? Heavy metals and or mold. So we're gonna do a mold and toxicity test at least once every couple of years. We're gonna do a DNA test. We're gonna do a stool test, as you know. Gut health, gut optimization is key. We're gonna do some hormone mapping and we're gonna do a speed of aging test. And then finally, labs extensive labs at least once a year as you get to my age and older perhaps even twice a year and what does extensive labs mean we're talking about a hundred and twenty plus biomarkers we're gonna be looking at things that the doctor is not looking for on their standard annual exam we're also going to be doing testing that shares the fit script optimal range versus the standard Western medicine range you know the one that says your healthy and normal. Do you know that that is taken or built upon the averages of the populace? Think about it. You look out, what do you see? You see a populace that is sick, that is metabolically deranged, that is falling apart, literally. That's not normal and that's not healthy. So very, very important is the testing and the ranges that they use. Number two, what do you think it is? Follow the data. Let data drive the decision making. So with our fit script, all of your nutrition, all of your training, and all of your supplementation is designed based on data. We're looking at declining health trends, we're looking at nutrient deficiencies, and we're plugging the gaps. So the foundational principles are number two, right? So you've got data and then follow the data. However, think about something, right? The foundational principles, sleep optimization, getting your sleep right, movement, right? Daily movement, hydration, Stress management, sunlight, nutrition, whole, real foods from as close to nature as possible. So number two is foundational principles based on data. Another important piece with regards to data, aura ring, whoop bracelet, whatever it is, right? Tracking is paramount. Getting an in-body, getting a DEXA, right? Once a month, once every three months. Number three, what modalities are we gonna bring in, all right? At the top, top, top of the list for me is dry finish sauna. Heat, 20 minutes a day, four days a week. I would argue that there's no modality that is going to give you a bigger bang for your buck than a dry finish sauna, four days a week, 20 minutes a session. Improved HRV, better circulation, better blood glucose management. Insulin sensitivity, it's gonna improve insulin sensitivity, which is paramount for longevity. It's gonna drive inflammation down, improve or ignite heat shock proteins, which is better for recovery. I'm a big, big, big proponent for the sauna. Not to mention it's gonna drive all cause mortality down by almost 50%. Risk of sudden cardiac event, 50%. Dementia, Alzheimer's, it's gonna drop that. I always, Always, if there's one thing above all else that I'm going to implement in terms of a modality, it's sauna, it's heat. Number four, we alluded to this, is supplementing based on your nutrient deficiencies. You cannot guess your way through this. You need to supplement based on what you're deficient in because here is the key. The longer you're deficient in key vitamins and minerals, the more susceptible you are to disease. You cannot guess what you're deficient in. It's not possible. So getting the data, and supplementing according to the data is paramount. Hyperbaric chamber, insane, very, very expensive, but insane for your health and for longevity. Cold plunge, 38 to 45 degrees, three minutes every other day, a minimum of 11 minutes per week. Number eight, minimize the amount of blue light you're taking in. At night especially, 
as soon as the sun comes down, I'm dropping the lights in my house and I'm putting these on, especially if I'm looking at screens. I also have a daytime pair. Very, very important. Blue light, fluorescent light, highly toxic. Number nine, drink filtered water. Not out of plastic. Get a reverse osmosis, get a filter that you can trust. Number 10, and perhaps these are not in any specific order. There's argues to be made that some of these are more important than others, sure, but this is my game plan. Think good thoughts. What you think about most often you become. If you're worried about the cancer or heart disease that runs in your family and you're constantly worried and thinking and worried and thinking that that's gonna happen to you, it probably will happen to you. So making sure that you're thinking good thoughts. This ties into stress management. We are typically, more often than not, from the time that we wake up to the time that we go to bed, in sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. That is gonna increase your blood pressure, among other things. Again, stress management may be one of the biggest things that you can do on your way to 125 years old. You wanna be in parasympathetic, right? Relax and recover. So let's talk about meditation. Let's talk about going on long walks. Let's talk about NuCalm, an app that I use to bring in the best vibrations. Vibration and energy is huge. If you are listening to today's music, that frequency is wrecking you. The air you breathe. If you are in a city, breathing in the smog and that pollution day in and day out, it's gonna be hard to live until you're 125. Let's keep going. The things that you put on your body, your skincare, your deodorant, your shampoo, is it toxic? Does it have all of the toxic ingredients and chemicals? Because your skin is the single largest organ. It absorbs everything. If you wouldn't eat it, you shouldn't use it. Now let's go back to the foundational principles, right? I said movement. Movement needs to include some form of weight and strength training. Very, very important, right? The more muscle you have on your body, the longer it is you're going to live. A couple of other important metrics as it relates to movement, right? VO2 max, testing your VO2 max. The higher the VO2 max, the longer you're gonna live. This also ties into mitochondria, mitochondria health. Very, very important for health span and lifespan. Walking, extremely underrated. So my current regimen is strength or weight training every other day, and in between those days, I'm rucking or going on a long walk. Now, going on a long walk down by the water in nature is also tied to what? Stress management. So you can kill two birds with one stone there. Let's talk about foods, whole foods from as close to nature as possible, single source foods. The closer you can eat to nature, the better. Going locally, eating from a farm, best, best, best thing you can do. Let's talk about sleep, sleep optimization, right? You need quality sleep. Seven to nine hours, uninterrupted sleep, paramount if you're gonna live until you're 125 years old. And all of these things tie into what, right? Movement, sleep optimization, stress management, HRV. HRV is heart rate variability. How your body adapts. Very, very important. Another key metric. And then finally, grip strength. Very, very important. Another great and very important metric in determining health span and lifespan, right? You know those old people, right? They struggle to get the jar open. Work on your grip strength, work on your HRV, work on your VO2 max and do all of the things that I've shared here. Follow the data, test, don't guess, and you're gonna have an amazing opportunity to live until you're 125 plus. Now, a couple other things. Stem cells, perhaps, the use of peptide therapies, hormone optimization, extremely important, right? And so if you take all of this and you make a list and then you build this into your lifestyle, one habit, after the next. If someone tries to do everything that I just shared, if I go back to when this all started for me, right? High intensity interval training, hit max, carb cycling, the sweet potato diet, I transformed in 113 days. Went from 25% plus body fat down to eight. Looked the best I ever looked. If I would have taken all of this and tried to do it all at once, no doubt I would have failed. So this is the culmination of the last 12 years of trying different diets, of trying different exercise, different modalities. One thing I left off, very, very important, mobility. As I'm thinking through this, right, mobility is huge. You wanna be mobile, you wanna be agile, you wanna have good balance. So making sure that 
these things are incorporated into your weekly movement or programming, if you will. So what do you think about this? A massive list, if the goal is 125 plus, what is something that I missed? Ha, I got it, get rid of alcohol. You are not gonna live until you're 125 if you are boozing on a weekly basis. I don't think there's a good time for alcohol, period, not a drop. And you're talking about somebody who was an alcoholic, who was going to AAA meetings, I drank three, four, sometimes five nights a week for a decade. I've since then removed it completely. Not a drop. I'm not interested in it. I don't like the way it makes me feel. If I'm tracking using an aura ring, I don't like what it does to my HRV, to my recovery. It's a toxin. It's poison. And it's going to make living until you're 125 next to impossible. And then there's other addictions, right? You've got drugs, you've got nicotine, you've got porn, which is the screen. There's a lot of things. And then finally, community, love, relationships, bonding with those closest to you. Extremely important. If you look at the blue zones, right? One thing, one commonality is that they have beautiful relationships. Lots of friendships, lots of love, community. So I think this rounds out my game plan on how I plan to live until I'm 125 plus. If I miss something, be sure to let me know. If you could add one thing to this list, what would it be?